Israel's Western backers like to pretend that Israel is a liberal state that wants peace in the Middle East. Unfortunately for them, Israel's ambassador to the UK has been more honest. Here's Sipi Hotabelli speaking to Sky News. Is there still a chance for a two-state solution? I think it's about time for the world to realize the Oslo paradigm failed on the 7th but, of October and we need to build a new one. And in but, order to build a new one... does that new one include the Palestinians living in a state of their own. Is, think, is that what it includes? I think the biggest question is, what type of Palestinians are on the other side? This is what Israel no, realized. they have a state, of The answer is absolutely no, and I'll tell you why. Well, then because how can there the be moment, peace? No, how can I there be peace you, in The reason there is no peace Israel. is because the Palestinians... How can, with, without offering Mark, a state to Palestine, how Mark, can there be peace in Israel? Israel knows today, and the world should know now, the reason the Oslo Accords failed is because the Palestinians never wanted to have a state next to Israel. They want to have a state from the river to the sea. So the two-state solution the... is dead. Why are you obsessed with a formula that never worked, that created this radical people in the other side? Why are you obsessed with that? Now, what wasn't surprising in that video is that Sipi Hotavelli doesn't want a two-state solution. You know, she is an ambassador for a government which doesn't want a two-state solution. Netanyahu is very open about this. Likud has never wanted a two-state solution. What they want is a greater Israel from the river to the sea, and then the Palestinians will either have to live under some apartheid system, or they will successfully manage to clear them out, which is ultimately their sort of ideal uh, scenario. What was surprising there, though, was that it was said in English to an international audience. Now, I think Sipi Hotavelli, I mean, seems to be a terrible ambassador. Mark Regev was the former Israeli ambassador to the UK. And he was very good at avoiding the question. You know, if he'd been asked that, he would have said something along the lines of, look, now is not the time to talk about end states. Now is the time where we have to defeat um, this terrorist organization. And I'm not going to talk about political solutions. We're in the middle of a war, right? In fact, I've heard him say that over the past few weeks whenever he's asked this question. Sipi Hotavelli just says, absolutely not. There shall be no two-state solution. And as I say, that's not a surprise because that's what these Israeli politicians have been saying for decades now. That's what Netanyahu has been saying for decades. But they don't say it to international audiences because we have a government that likes to pretend that the Israeli government is something that it's not. You know, Joe Biden, Rishi Sunak, they all say, we're going to fund Israel to fight this war and we're backing a two-state solution. Now, it's very awkward for them if the Israeli government come out and say in English to Western audience, we don't want a two-state solution. What the hell are you talking about? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Right? Which for me means she's, you know, I'm, I'm thankful to Sipi Otavelli for sort of saying what we all knew, what we've all known for a long time, but which isn't often said in English. So, so thank you, Sipi Otavelli, for that. To be honest, was that a good interview or was just he, he very lucky? That's gone viral on Twitter and lots of people who should have known about it saying, what? I can't, you know, all these liberals who are sort of like very critical of pro-Palestine activists saying, what? They don't want a two-state solution. This is crazy. You know, so we've obviously known this for a very long time. Some people are surprised. Um, that Sky host will be pleased that sort of he got that scoop the thing we all knew, knew but said in English, he, he he really should have pushed back and said, well, well, then are you going to give them all the vote? You know, if there isn't going to be a Palestinian state, are you going to occupy it indefinitely, forever? Are they going to get the vote? Is this going to be apartheid? Because if you're not going to give the Palestinians a state and you're not going to give them the vote, then you are going to have apartheid or ethnic cleansing, one of the two. Right? Those are the two options there. Um, Ash, I want your thoughts on this. Um, so as I say, this has been Israeli government policy for a very, very long time, but it isn't often expressed so clearly to an international audience. How significant do you think that is? So I think you've pointed out something that's really important, which is the sort of language bifurcation of Israel's PR strategy. Because what is said in Hebrew to the Israeli press, to Israeli uh, politicians, is really different often from what you hear in English. So in English, it's all about bolstering that support, that sort of immunity, that military aid, that total sense of impunity from America. And you sort of say whatever you have to say in order to achieve it. And in Hebrew, to Israeli media and Israeli politicians, which is becoming increasingly radicalized, hardline and right wing, you sort of say, what's really going on? Which is, of course, I won't be a Palestinian state. Me, Benjamin Netanyahu, vote me and I'll make sure there's never a Palestinian state. America, I know what America is. It is a thing that moves. So you, you, you have this sort of... Um, you know, two two facedness, right? You've got one pitch for uh, 
you know, the the Anglosphere and, and another in Israel. And I guess I'm trying to work out whether Sippy Hotavelli is having a mask off moment, but she's not as, I don't know, she lacks the finesse perhaps of someone like Mark Regev. Or if because right now the position of the Israeli state is that they've altered the facts on the ground so radically in Gaza, um, and not just in Gaza, that the um, entrenching of occupation in the West Bank, the further radicalization of uh, settlers, you know, Itmar ben Gavir handing out guns to settlers, that there is no longer a need to keep up the pretense of, you know, wanting to uh, one day uphold or implement the Oslo Accords. I wonder if there is a sense of, okay, well, you know, we've killed 20,000 civilians. We've not stopped bombing. We can do what we want. We, we, we don't have to pay this kind of lip service anymore. So I wonder if it's a, a different personality or if everything that's happened since October the 7th means that, you know, the, the, the gloves are off. There's no need to keep up the lie anymore. I think it was an accident. And and the reason I say this is because, you know, the sort of two facedness, or sort of the the idea where you say we really want a two state solution, then you do something a bit different. You could say that sort of about Israeli labour, you know. So sort of the liberals in Israel who sort of say we really want a two state solution, and they offer deals which aren't that good. So what was offered in two thousand, and the Palestinians are always sort of blamed for saying no to that deal, was. Um, you know, a, 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 an independent Palestinian state in the West Bank, but, you know, it wouldn't have its own, it wouldn't have control of its armed forces, and it would have this really dodgy border whereby lots of the settlements would would stay. So they were they were offering something which, you know, wasn't a great deal, but they did, you know, they said, we are very much committed to a two-state solution. Now, Netanyahu doesn't normally say, we are very committed to a two-state solution to an international audience. He just normally neither confirms nor denies. And Regev does exactly the same thing. Neither confirms nor denies. Whenever a two-state solution is brought up, he changes the subject. And this is sort of long-standing Israeli policy in many areas. So when it comes to their nuclear weapons, Israel's policy is to neither confirm nor deny. That's been their official policy for decades, in fact. Um, and, and that makes me think that, that the next question Mark Stone from Sky should have asked, okay, do you have nuclear weapons? He could have got like the, the scoop of the century by just getting this... this, this <laughs> This idiot, I think, who, who just can't contain herself. So sort of say, yes, of course we've got nuclear weapons. Of course we don't want a two-state solution. I think um, he, he could have kept that interview going on a little bit longer. Ash, your final thoughts on that interview. I mean, are you as grateful for me for for Sippy Hotavelli? Why would you make this person an ambassador? Like she's the she seems to have the opposite skills, right? She, which is just she she's not doesn't seem to be taking government lines. She's showing Israel to be really extreme. You know, you're supposed to show Israel to be this very normal liberal country and she just can't contain herself. Maybe it shows that Israel is more confident than ever that the UK will go on with whatever atrocities they choose to carry out against the Palestinians. Once upon a time, we maybe needed a bit more of a, a talented ambassador like Mark Greger, whereas now you can just, you know, send us any old idiot ranting, raving, you know, and we'll be like, yeah, fine. I think that point about Israel not sending their best is actually relevant, not just because, you know, they think maybe what the, what, what the West thinks about them doesn't matter as much. But Mark Regev, actually, who is a very talented communicator, he was sent to the UK 2016 to 2020 when there was a leader of the opposition who was actually very critical of Israel. And it could have been the case that a permanent member of the UN Security Council would have been someone who would have stood up unashamedly for the Palestinian people. Right. So they sent Mark Regev over. He had quite a difficult job. You know, how to try and contain this threat to Israel's security. When Jeremy Corbyn was out and Keir Starmer was in, they're like, oh, now let's send over the B team. You know, Mark Regev got deployed somewhere else. I think he became a, you know, he moved back to Israel, actually, and became an advisor to, to Netanyahu. And then they sent over this complete idiot who's, you know, a complete incompetent because they know that whatever she says, Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak, the two major parties are still going to give pretty much unconditional support to Israel, which is what you want. You know, if, if you want to secure your foreign backers, you need to make sure that the two main parties both support you. Um, they have that now, so they don't need to send their best. 